Let's take a look at another eBay special solar inductive wall light. This one was interesting because it came in three options. You could have the centre of it can glow red or change colour or do the simulated flame effect. And it looks quite nice in the pictures. Uh, you can judge for yourself what it looks like in real life. So uh, once again, lovely image here. And it says 6,000 watt LED solar wall lights, PIR motion sensor, outdoor garden, street fence light. And it was £5 plus £5 shipping. So £10 all in shipped. Uh, people will jump to the defense of the company and say that 6,000 watts is actually the model number, but it's not really. I'm not sure the model number. There's the model number there. It is not 6,000 watts. Anyway, let us explore what we get. The box is multi-sided. It has the color-changing version picture here. Um, yeah, I think that's more or less it. I'm not sure what the red one does. I can imagine the color-changing one just goes... Uh, Red, green, blue and all that, but uh, not sure what the red one does. It comes remote control with the magical SOS button. I'm not sure what that does yet because I've never found anything that actually responds. So here's a light. It has the outer ring of white LEDs. And if I click the button, watch your eyes. It's going to be bright. It lights up and it then just detected the dusk with well, the light. So it tamed it down, right? Okay. So uh, don't watch your eyes. It's too bright for it to actually operate. Um... That it's got the three modes, it's got an infrared sensor, it's got the passive infrared detector, and uh, the solar panel on the back has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sections, which is about 5.5 volts going on roughly half a volt per section of solar cell. And it's quite small, I'd say it's going to be about 50 milliamps. So, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to uh, set this up so it goes into its little flame emulation mode. For that, I'm going to have to cover the passive infrared detector. So I'll do that right now. One moment, please. Right. OK, not going to lie. I was expecting something a little bit more than this. Let's take the cover off because this just bayonet caps off the outside. And let's see what the LEDs are doing inside. So we literally have a two-channel flame with the LEDs just uh, on the outside. They're just dimming up and down. The middle side, they're just flashing. That is it. And if I take the cover off that I've put over the PIR, watch yourself. It's going to get bright suddenly. It will detect my movement. And that's what we've got under the cover. OK, back to the main video. Watch your eyes. Even more light is coming back. So now we've seen the disappointing reality of the flame effect. Uh, here is the remote control. If I turn it on, it's got the usual modes. It's got the sort of uh, it, it's got the one that it stays off until uh, it detects movement. But I think that's the one that goes to the flame effect. The other mode is uh, it goes at low level but brightens up when it detects movement. Yes, it does. And the other mode is possibly just staying lit all night. I'm not really sure. Um, not really tested it, not actually going to test it either. But anyway, let's also get the SOS button, which I'll hold it in for ages. Nope, I thought it might strobe or something and do something exciting, but no, it doesn't. Right, tell you what, let's open it up. So, as you've already seen, the front just bayonet caps off and reveals... A circuit board with three connections coming on. One is the common positive, I think. And the other one's switching to negative, including the one with a little microcontroller in here that looks as though it's driving the LEDs directly. Um, let's take the back off it. Uh, is this screwdriver going to fit? Yes, this screwdriver is going to fit. There are six screws. This is giving strong deja vu strictly because of this ball mounting bracket, because... A solar light I took apart with an equally ambitious power rating. It also had that exact same mounting system. They may be from the same factory. Maybe all they make is optimistically rated solar lights. Do I need to lift? Oh, no, that, come, that comes off together. So it's gone 18650 again. That's nice. Is this the same circuit as before? I'm not really sure. There's what looks like a microcontroller and some transistors for switching the two circuits. Possibly a little voltage regulator, or is that... Oh, that might be... I'm, I'm getting deja vu. This is more or less the same circuit board that was in the other unit. Okay, I shall... Does that pop out? Is it stuck in? It is stuck in. It's not going to pop out. Uh, but I shall explore this. 
there are two screws, that's why it's not popping out. But really, it's just a circuit board with the two circuits in it. Okay. One moment, please. I'll take a picture of the circuit board and we'll compare it to the previous one and see what it looks like. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete and some science has been done, so let's explore. The LED panel has the outer section of the cold white LEDs and they're all just in parallel. There is no current limiting. It's a bit odd. There is a 1 ohm resistor in series with the uh, colour effects section. Now, the colour effects section has a little 8-pin microcontroller. Let's zoom down a little bit. It's got a little 8-pin microcontroller and, uh, interestingly, pin... Uh, the pinout is identical to like the PIC12 uh, sort of pinout, but also PIC, pin 4 is not connected. This is interesting because pin 4 is the master clear in the PIC microcontrollers. Now, there are effectively five circles of LEDs here, and I wondered what would happen if I populated the other ones, so I did. Let me just turn this on and bring it in. So I populated it, and if we zoom down a bit in this, I put green ones in in the other positions, and what happens is that the three outer ones undulate, they dip out one at a time, whereas the two inner ones do that sort of general flashing pattern. So I'm guessing the inner ones are for flashing effects, and the outer three, if they were populated with red, green, and blue, they might be the colour chasing one. For the other effect that's just red, apparently, uh, I'll just turn that off. For the other effect, if it is just static red, I'm not sure why they'd want that. If you were to bridge pins 7 and 8 of this microcontroller with a blob of solder and these two adjacent pads, then uh, that would bring in one, two or three sections of these circles. So you could just populate it with LEDs and in the controller you could just have a resistor chosen to match. Talking about the controller, let's bring the controller in and take a look at it. Let's zoom out just a little bit because it is fairly wide. There we go. So, let's start at the very beginning. The solar panel connects to the orange pad here, and it connects to the blue here. It uh, can charge the lithium cell, which connects to the red pads, via this NPN transistor, via an odd circuit that is under control of the microcontroller. The microcontroller also switches power to the infrared sensor and the passive infrared, and the only little decoupling capacitor is purely across the passive infrared. Uh, and IR sensor, probably because they're the most sensitive, they require the most stable supply, although it's not a regulated supply. It's literally just being turned on by the microcontroller when it's uh, activated. There is a switch under here, by the way. Um, and that's presumably to save power and standby. The output is switched via a NPN transistor for the flame effect, and a MOSFET for the white, white, but there is no current limiting. I thought the 1 ohm resistor would have been for the white, and the other one would have just been switching, but it's, they've not used that. You can add a resistor yourself if needs be, but they all have, a, they have used very standard resistor values. They've used a 1 ohm, they've used 100 ohm, um, 1K and 100, and 100K. Let me show you the schematic. Oh, incidentally, the lithium cell, which they've just soldered directly onto the end of, has a sizzling capacity of 700 milliamp hour. It's not really that great, but you know, it's good enough. Less of a bang when it inevitably fails, because uh, one of the downsides of these uh, solar garden lights of the lithium cells is that they will try and charge the cell below zero. So if, if it's winter and it's a sunny winter day and the temperature's below zero, lithium cells do not like that because as the lithium ions transfer across from one electrode material to the other, they, there's a problem that they can't intercalate, they can't merge in properly and they form a layer of lithium and it damages the cell. So here's the uh, solar panel. It's a, not a very generous solar panel. 5.5 volt typically under load, and that goes up to that transistor. A 100 ohm resistor is here. That effectively turns on that transistor. That has the added advantage that if the battery, the cell voltage was really low, it will bring the cell voltage up till the processor kicks in. Once the processor kicks in, it can do two things. It can monitor for dusk by just looking at that pin as an input, but it can also, when it detects that the cell is up to about 4.2 volts, theoretically, uh, it can actually shunt this down. It can pull this to low and it turns that uh, transistor off, theoretically. Uh, 
I'm guessing this 100k resistor is partly a load just to for stability and also so it can sense the voltage properly for dusk sensing. There's a microcontroller with its output that enables the infrared and pass infrared with their little decoupling capacitor. It just turns them off when they're not needed and turns them on when they're needed. Um, it's just so when you click the button to the off mode, it just shuts down completely because otherwise those would have a slight uh, quiescent current. Then there's the big cluster of cold white LEDs, which are turned on by this A2SHB MOSFET, which is an N-channel MOSFET. It's an A2SHB, which is a really popular choice. 1K gate resistor and a 100K pull-down resistor. They seem to like their 100K resistors. They've used very standard values. But the uh, microcontroller for controlling the flashing LEDs, the effect LEDs, it has a 1K resistor going to the base of a standard NPN transistor, and then that mystery 1 ohm resistor, and then the microcontroller itself, which then just drives the LEDs directly. And I suppose a lot of the current limiting there is just purely the uh, the pin of the microcontroller, although I did measure it peaking at 50 milliamps as it was doing just the two-channel effects, which isn't that great for battery life. Also, pushing the microcontroller quite hard, they are kind of abusing it. But that is it. That is your uh, flame effect, your really crap flame effect solar light. Um, it's interesting. It works. It's fairly generic. I haven't tested uh, if this shuts off properly at the full charge. Owing to the lack of sunshine largely because I've done this video in winter, but not to worry. Uh, but there we have it, a very basic cell, just the usual stuff. It's one of those generic eBay solar lighting products. It kind of works. It's a bit odd, but it is relatively fun just to play with.